morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're dialing in from. Thank you for tuning in. Of course, thank you to the International Trade Council for inviting Singapore and myself to speak here to all of you today. Let me just uh, pull up my screen. There we go. Um, my name is Choi, and I'm from the Singapore Economic Development Board, or EDB for short. And today I'm here to share with you how we support uh, investments into Singapore and how we do industry development in Singapore. A quick introduction, um, EDB is a statutory board under the Ministry of Trade and Industry, so we're responsible for economic and industrial development strategies. Uh, we take an integrated approach uh, to economic development, so we work with our sister agencies, for example, ASTAR, uh, which is an umbrella of public research institutes focused on industry collaborations, and also Enterprise Singapore, uh, who support and connect local startups and SMEs, and of course, JTC with our industrial land needs and development. So a bit more about EDB, uh, we do two main things. So first, we do investment promotion. So we support and facilitate companies landing in, setting up and expanding in Singapore for them to access the Asian markets. And we do this through both tangible and intangible support. Uh, the second thing we do is uh, less visible, but I would argue more strategic, uh, which is industry development. So we look across different sectors and across the value chains of different sectors to see where Singapore and its companies and its businesses there can be competitive. And then we take a very active approach uh, in growing the industry and the surrounding ecosystem. Of course, you can see this becomes a virtual cycle because the more we speak to businesses and companies like yourself, the more we understand the industry development we have to do, and the more we do that, the more it serves the companies and the more companies it attracts. So that's the, the, the hypothesis and the theory that we work on. Um, leveraging a little bit more on our approach, which is what we call ATC or Attract, uh, Transform and Create. So we continue to attract, uh, or want to attract the best in class in new or adjacent industries and to grow them. Uh, we do have a strong in stock base of companies, manufacturers, and we want to transform them uh, with them through digitalization and of course uh, the, the new trend these days which is aligned to the decarbonization journey of both uh, countries and companies. Of course last but not least is the new frontier which is creating new business. So we create new technology platforms through our public and private research collaborations. Um, we encourage strong open innovation through our tech and startup ecosystem and of course, corporate venturing as well with our own unique form of venture build and venture capital, which we work, work with corporates to support and de-risk their journey. I think the best way to illustrate our role is to trace the economic journey on growth of industries in Singapore. Um, so in a generation of 50 years, we have moved from a labor intensive economy and society to one that's based on knowledge and innovation. And I think this is best exemplified with the products uh, that were manufactured out of Singapore. So in the 60s, when we just gained our independence, uh, companies were leveraging the low cost labor present in Singapore. So they produced garments, toys, TVs, radios, and the like. Uh, in the 70s, as we managed to reach full employment, the focus was on upskilling and companies were then creating more sophisticated products uh, out of Singapore, such as uh, the HP pocket calculator in the 70s. Um, in the 80s, as we got more uh, affluent, it was about capital intensive projects. Uh, so we started to build new industries. Uh, for instance, we had our first semicon wafer fab in the 80s, the first uh, petrochemical complex, and of course uh, started to do aerospace engine overhaul in Singapore. In the 90s, we moved up the value chain um, into technology and services. And this was also uh, spawned the growth of the biomedical hub and the consumer industries amongst others. This century, of course, is about knowledge and innovation. So really, we do that by investments into basic and translational research uh, with industry through our public-private collaborations. Uh, we want to grow the tech and startup ecosystem with the right talent and with active capital. So our role continues to be attracting the best in class and create new industries and businesses with them. Um, but what is constant is really that our economy has remained open and diverse, right? I think in the past decades, you've seen many countries and cities uh, move away from manufacturing uh, to technology and services. But we at EDB in Singapore, we're inclined to keep a base on manufacturing. Today, it still forms about 20% of our GDP. A lot of people are quite surprised 
uh, by that. And we do want to push it to 20 to 25% uh, in the next decade. Um, a few reasons why. I think for a city state, uh, it creates a sort of resilience for us. Uh, even last year, in a COVID year in 2020, our manufacturing output actually grew by 7.3%, uh, which is testament to the resilience of the industry. Uh, manufacturing also allows us to keep in touch with technology. So the manufacturing sectors account for more than 50% of our R&D spends, and this allows us to absorb and tap into new technologies for the economy. Uh, last but not least, it is also a source of high value and high tech um, manufacturing. So across different manufacturing sectors, such as biomedical to chemicals to electronics, uh, we continue to want to attract and grow the high value and high tech uh, manufacturing. Allow me also to highlight the verticals uh, that we have grown over the decades and where it continues to be strong. Um, for instance, electronics. Uh, Singapore produces about 20% of the global semicon equipment output. We also have foundries like Infineon and Micron uh, manufacturing out of Singapore. Uh, in biomedical, we have uh, eight out of the top 10 pharma companies, uh, familiar names like GSK, Sanofi, Amgen, uh, for instance, uh, producing four of the top 10 drugs by global revenue. Uh, in energy and chemicals, we are the fifth largest refinery export hub. Uh, we are one of Shell's uh, six integrated petrochemical hubs globally. And as we move along our energy transition journey together with the industry, we're also starting to attract uh, what we call green investments in this sector. For instance, Neste producing renewable fuels and Akima uh, producing biosource PA11 resins out of Singapore. But increasingly, just like in, in, you know, I explained in the evolution of our economic development, we're also focusing on the horizontals, right? That cut across the different industries. And you can see on the screen, for instance, in advanced manufacturing, which I'll elaborate on later, uh, in digital services, infrastructure, uh, and, and growth of tech companies to enable the transformation of the economy. And last, uh, we are already quite a well-known supply chain and logistics hub, but we want to enhance that uh, through our air and sea ports, but also building supply chain resilience in an increasingly uh, regionalized and threatened uh, supply chain environment. Um, some numbers, uh, some rankings, I think they only tell us one side of the story, but I think it creates important outcomes. So for IP protection, which we know is uh, very important uh, for high-tech research, product development, manufacturing, uh, we are ranked number two. Uh, in talent, it's, it's very important for us to remain uh, open to the best in class global talent around the world, no matter where they come from. And of course, sustainability for us, uh, it's, it's not a new issue, it's actually an existential issue because Singapore being such a small city state, we have food, energy, security issues um, that we have always been trying to solve. Uh, we need to keep the city livable uh, with, with industry, commerce, and communities coexisting. So sustainability for us across the economy and across the country is an important topic, and we continue to push uh, investments and new concepts and ideas there. When it comes to new growth opportunities, I think we always like to say that Singapore, you're in Singapore, not for Singapore, not just for Singapore, but it's a gateway to the rest of Southeast Asia. Um, it's a, a growing market of huge potential and a lot of it already realized the potential. Um, 650 million people with a consumer market of $1.2 trillion. And importantly, this is growth by fundamentals. It's a growth, is driven by the growth of an affluent middle class. It is driven by growth in consumption and discretionary spending and not just growth through, through capital or government stimuli uh, bubbles. The mega cities in Southeast Asia, which are growing, uh, accounts for about annual economic impact of $500 billion upwards. And the internet economy has tripled in the last five years to $100 billion and is projected to triple again in the next five years to $300 billion. And I think behind the dollar numbers, the important thing is also the human numbers. Um, out of a, again, out of the population of 650 million, uh, 400 million of us are connected. But interestingly, 140 million only came online the past five years, and 40 million alone uh, came online last year, of course, driven by the COVID situation. And this, are just, this, this is not just consumers coming online, but also consuming digital services. Uh, more than one in three started because of COVID, uh, tapping on services like e-commerce, groceries, 
in fintech lending in education in entertainment and beauty across various uh, digital services and nine in ten have expressed that they will continue using them um, i think this digital adoption also drives a new set of operations 90 percent of us in southeast asia connects primarily by the smartphone so we're the most mobile first region in the world i believe and we spent about four to five hours on our devices compared to three hours globally. So the internet economy and the opportunity there, opportunity there is, is definitely immense. Um, our connections to the region is also something quite valuable and, and cherished by, by companies in Singapore. Uh, of course, uh, fly, uh, flying and traveling is not so possible these days, a lot of friction, but we do believe there'll be a resumption of necessary business travel. Uh, virtual working, virtual meetings will still be important, but we all know in business, the face-to-face -face for the trust and spontaneity uh, to do your sales and innovation work will continue to be open, uh, will continue to be important. So I think uh, that is a good, uh, important value proposition for Singapore to be so well connected uh, by in three to four hours to the rest of Southeast Asia. We're also connected by our free trade agreements with 60% of the world's GDP. Uh, through an extensive network of 25 FTAs that uh, companies and manufacturers in Singapore can tap on. Allow me to also elaborate here on the horizontals I, I talked about. Um, first, for example, first in innovation. So we are focused on enabling an innovation ecosystem for companies to create new products, new services, and new business models out of Singapore, and then to scale and grow that in Southeast Asia or even Asia. And this is done through our strong public and private research partnerships. Uh, we're focused on growing our tech and startup ecosystem, like mentioned, and having a network of what we call a global innovation alliance, where we connect uh, companies in Singapore to regional markets and innovation ecosystems. Another important thing that we're doing is in corporate venturing. So we're supporting new businesses out of Singapore uh, through our own venture build and our own brand of uh, venture capital. So for instance, we've worked with uh, Schneider Electric and PNG. We have both uh, committed to incubate and grow new businesses with global growth potential out of Singapore. Um, in digitalization, I think it's about companies uh, transforming their businesses from internal processes and functions uh, to their external products and services. And Singapore again creates that, allows that ecosystem to do that. So we're working on a few things. One is really attracting the top tech companies, we have about 80 of the top 100 tech companies in Singapore, plus a thriving startup ecosystem. This allows for partnerships uh, for businesses to digitally transform themselves. Uh, we have a strong bench of STEM talent and we've poured about $19 billion in public investments in the last few years. Uh, to create this is to create really the pipeline of new technologies that can be commercialized down the road. And we all know that operating in the cloud is, uh, is a bit of a misnomer because the digital infrastructure, the physical infrastructure is actually crucial. So Singapore holds 50% uh, of Southeast Asia's data center capacity, something that we're actively building, and also having an extensive network of subsea cables that connect us to the region and across the Pacific, and having that kind of capacity and bandwidth to serve, again, the e internet economy that's, that's rapidly growing. So some examples include working with Bellore Logistics and Makino to digitally transform their shop floor, uh, to be more monitored, to be more automated, and to be more predictive in nature. I'll spend a bit more time here on another horizontal, which is advanced manufacturing that we're, we're working on. And we're working with companies and the industry in the four main prongs to grow, to build, to transform, and to connect. And let me just take uh, one by one in turn. So, really, to grow, the first um, step for us was really to attract. Um, a diverse base of technology providers uh, who have set up their centers of excellence, COEs, to develop new technology and solutions from Singapore. Uh, and you can see most of them having a regional and global mandate. Uh, this allows the manufacturers to discover, test, and adopt new technology. And in turn, once there's greater interest from manufacturers, that attracts uh, more technology providers and gives greater incentive for such uh, technology providers to set up or expand their presence in Singapore, uh, clearly a virtual cycle that, that we are supporting. So examples across the industry that have made I4.0 investments uh, are here, 
and you can see the range from logistics, uh, energy to consumer sectors. We also support uh, with our infrastructure and land needs. So we're building a new district of what we call Jurong Innovation District or I 4.0 district. Uh, this is really encouraging to encourage collaboration across the whole manufacturing value chain. So in a 600 hectare space, we intend to bring all the stakeholders together. Uh, this includes R&D institutions, uh, training institutes, technology providers and manufacturers I spoke about um, together to collaborate and then to innovate and, and match uh, each other. So for instance, uh, some successes we really had are Siemens having its uh, advanced manufacturing transformation center there, uh, McKinsey having its uh, digital capability center there. And we do think it's an ideal place to cite what you would like to call your factory of the future uh, with new ideas, new concepts. So for instance, we're working with a partner to pilot uh, in the entire district an underground automated distribution network uh, depending you know, on with use of automated vehicles and AGVs rather than you know, the, the, the trucks and the containers driving right up to the factory floor. In building, uh, we take an active role to support and develop new technology. So in, we have poured investments into what we call two model factories, uh, one focused on SMEs and another focused on larger companies, MNCs, but really both to test and integrate smart uh, digital and advanced technologies uh, with, the, the, with their existing manufacturing processes, both for the SMEs and MNCs uh, in the areas such as robotics, uh, 3D printing, uh, AGVs, IoT sensors, and you know, even having a smart uh, supply chain tower or control room. And together with the model factories, uh, we of course need the programs. So these are where we put in uh, public private research programs uh, to collaborate with industry and the intent is really to generate economic value within uh, three to five years. So programs such as uh, industrial IoT platform or developing a hyper-personalized manufacturing line for consumer goods, um, you know, trying to aim for MOQ of one, uh, creating a product uh, personalized and specific to one consumer and not just about you know, packing for one consumer. And, you know, we believe that this will allow for new business models and new products and services uh, to be developed out of Singapore. Of course, in doing all of these, the talent will be key. So again, we take an industry-centric approach. We work with industry to identify new skills and competencies. And then we design and subsidize programs, both with training institutes or with the companies themselves uh, in order to bring in re industry relevance for these new skills. Um, we do recognize that reskilling and upskilling is also key. So we have national skills program uh, in advanced manufacturing that are modular and skill-based uh, for manufacturing workers. When it comes to uh, I 4.0 uh, transformation, uh, we always say that you can't change uh, what you can't measure. So what we have done in the past few years is develop uh, our Smart Industry Readiness Index or Siri for short, another form of Siri. Uh, and this is for any manufacturer, large or small, uh, and is really a measurement tool and a common language to help companies measure their I 4.0 status and progress. So we do this along three elements, uh, through its processes, through the technologies and how a, how a company organizes themselves, uh, be it in talent and in the structure and management. So after the diagnosis, uh, companies or manufacturers can work with tech providers on their transformation. Uh, and we're not just onboarding the manufacturers or solution providers, but also TICs, uh, professional services, uh, and also, quite most recently working with the World Economic Forum or WEF to adopt uh, Siri and proliferate this as the global standard uh, for I 4.0. So this will happen uh, in, the, in the next few years. Uh, last but not least in advanced manufacturing is really to connect uh, with the community. So we have our um, annual marquee event, which is uh, ITAP or Industrial Transformation Asia Pacific. Um, in partnership with Hanover Messe, of course. Uh, it's really for companies to stay up to date on trends, technologies, but also a platform for them, like any big event, to build partnerships. So last year, obviously, we had no choice but to move this virtually, but also allows us to tap into a larger and a global audience. Uh, this year, it will definitely happen in October, but we'll keep our fingers crossed uh, on the modality 
uh, given the COVID situation and of course the, the uh, possibility of business travel. Um, and I think it's, it's important to look at the outcomes of all we're doing. And honestly, in just the last two years, we have seen a lot of success with the approach. Um, we've seen new facilities uh, with advanced manufacturing technology, for instance, Micron's uh, NAND manufacturing, uh, Neste's expansion of this renewable fuels refinery, and GSK's uh, new pharma facility, all incorporating advanced manufacturing tech. And speaking of GSK, I think it's important here to also um, speak about what's going on in the COVID pandemic. We all know that globally there's a shortage of vaccine and therapeutics capacity. And that is something that we're working actively to grow that capacity uh, for healthcare resilience in the region. So for instance, we're working with Thermo Fisher on a fill and finish line. Uh, we've state of art technology and we're more in the investment pipeline to build up uh, this regional capacity uh, to, to protect ourselves against uh, future pandemics. I think another aspect uh, of connecting is also to connect uh, companies and, and manufacturers in Singapore with the regional production hub in the rest of ASEAN. So specifically what we call a training concept uh, with Iskandar Malaysia up north and of course in Batam, Bintan and Karimun or BBK for short in Indonesia. Um, this is really recognizing that while Singapore is great for high tech and high value manufacturing, R&D and HQ activities, uh, we can actually bring more value by working with our neighbors. So for instance, more competitive cost means that uh, companies can tap into lower value manufacturing in these regions uh, and then twin that with the activities uh, in Singapore. At the same time, uh, companies can leverage the proximity to Singapore with each region less than two hours away. Uh, market access, uh, having a manufacturing presence in these regions will also allow market access to, into Malaysia and Indonesia. And EDB can actually support um, these projects in IMBBK uh, with our partnerships, uh, with support and our partnerships with the real estate and industrial par partners in the different regions. Some examples of companies uh, in Iskandar Malaysia twinning with Singapore uh, includes Dyson, Polka, and DHL. And in BBK, Infineon, Shimano, and even Apple. And it's important to know that these training concepts can cut across many different industries, uh, not just in manufacturing, but also in digital tech ecosystems and also in agri-food. Beyond the connections uh, and the industry initiatives explained prior, um, let me explain more about how we help. Um, and there are also intangible financial support, uh, which is meant to really catalyze your setup in Singapore uh, with tax and grants incentives like usual, uh, what we call the pioneer and development expansion incentive for companies uh, to grow new capabilities and economic activity out of Singapore, such as manufacturing, R&D and headquarter activities, or grants around manpower capability development or R&D talent growth. Uh, that is something that we support and catalyze as well. We have also um, built in or uh, created a lot of digital resources for companies to kickstart your business. Uh, so for instance, a connections concierge where we onboard partners uh, with service delivery standards for the basic things of how you set up in a new country, such as incorporation, banking, legal, or even office space, uh, living and set up cost uh, calculator to estimate your business expenditure as you land in and expand in Singapore. Um, you can also keep in touch with us, uh, follow our website, social media, insights where we can share more about companies growing in Asia. And here I will leave you with a QR code uh, as I conclude uh, my presentation and for you to get connected to us. Um, Singapore really being a city state, we have a very unique land and labor profile. And also with our economic journey, it may not be a fit for all businesses and companies. Our USP in Singapore is really in the high value high tech space, be it in manufacturing, developing new products and services, and a safe haven for your IP and products in your overall value or supply chain. Um, companies also use Singapore as a base to access the fast growing Southeast Asian markets uh, in a wide range of sectors. And here at EDB, we like to pride ourselves as being a one-stop shop for any interest uh, that you might have in setting up in Singapore to access Asia. Uh, my team and I will be personally manning the booth and we'll be happy to understand your questions and needs uh, in the next few days. So 
reach out to us anytime. Thank you for listening and enjoy the presentations ahead.